Now we're going to talk about variable names and some of the restrictions that the C standard puts on variable names so that we know what the rules are when we make up a, a name of uh, a variable to use in our program. You make these variables, as you probably figure out, I, I'm sure you have a little bit of uh, knowledge of programming uh, by this time. We make these variables so that we can store things in them, like a name or an address or a zip code or uh, a billing amount or something like that. So when you make a variable name, you of course want to try to make it so that it uh, reminds you of what's in there, of what you're using the thing for. Some of the restrictions, though, uh, we see that uh, our first character must be a letter. Variable names in the, in the C programming language are case sensitive. The standard calls for the first 63 characters to be significant and the first 31 for external names, uh, for example, function names. Let's take a look at, at some details of this. Variable names starting with an alpha. There you can see that the, the character array that we have, which is going to be a bunch of characters put together, uh, we haven't said how big yet because there's nothing inside those little square brackets. You'll see how we do that, of course, uh, when we get to arrays and, and those kinds of things. But uh, we care about the first name right now, uh, talking about variable names. So there we have a character first name. That's just fine. It starts with an alpha. Uh, you understand what it's for? Good. Uh, character first name with a one though can't do that the uh, the compiler will complain about that and it will uh, error out on you That's because you cannot start a variable with a number the first name there we see on the third line with an underscore in it that's that's just fine too it's uh, quite all right to put under underscores in the name uh, in the middle of your variable names and it helps you kind of break things up if you have to put several different words together uh, to properly describe the variable name. That one on the bottom is legal, but you really shouldn't do it. Uh, you definitely cannot use, uh, don't, you do not want to use, I should say, uh, two underscores at the beginning of a variable. The uh, C++ language defines that, so when you go over to C++, you don't want to be in that habit of, of having uh, two underscores in the front of there. And you don't want to use a single underscore in regular C either because many times the compiler will use a variable with an underscore as the first character itself. So we don't want to do that so that we don't accidentally uh, get crossed up in what the compiler is trying to do uh, when it compiles our code. So really it's uh, just easier if you don't. <laughs> just don't use an underscore as the first character of your variable name. Variables uh, names are case sensitive, so there you can see first underscore name, uh, first name, and character first name all in lowercase. Those are all different identifiers, and that would be very confusing inside your program when you're referring to those different first names with an underscore or without an underscore or without a uh, without any uppercase characters at all. Uh, those are all different to the language, and they would all be different locations in memory, and that would be a problem uh, it, just for us trying to figure out what's going on in the program. By tradition, we use all uppercase or all caps for constants. There you see a, a constant getting created. As we look at the preprocessor, we'll talk more about pound include, and, and here you see pound define. Here we're defining uh, the letters P and I, or pi, as the value 3.14159 and you can extend that out a bit if you like but uh, we use that all caps because then when you're looking through the program and you see an item that is in all uppercase you can figure that that's a constant and you don't accidentally try to uh, set it to some other value or try to do something with it that would be illegal for a constant that's our tradition for naming constants when you're creating a variable name, the first 63 characters of the name are significant. By the standards and the rules, if you had a 64, 65, whatever character variable name, you're not guaranteed for that to be unique, and the compiler is allowed to complain about it. In reality, though, today's compilers, uh, for example, our Microsoft C compiler that we're using, it will go out 2048 significant characters. If you have a variable name that is 2048 characters, you need to start your programming career over again because there are other issues involved.
So as far as the standard is concerned, 63 characters count, but there's really many more. When you're creating a function name, because functions can be in different files and they can be brought together by the linker, only 31 characters are guaranteed for an external name, a function name, or the name of a variable that is available to other pieces of code outside our file. Because remember that a C program can be made up of a bunch of different C source files, and all of them are compiled into object code, and then all of that object code is linked. So when uh, one piece of object code refers to a function that's in a different piece of object code, it calls it by name. And those names are only guaranteed to be 31 valid characters long. Again, in practice today, you'll find that most linkers will go way beyond 31 characters, farther than you'd have, ever have to care. Should you ever get into a programming environment, though, creating embedded code, uh, the kind of code that would go inside a oh, a calculator or, or some piece of machinery or a car or something like that, you know, that operates a, a piece of machinery. That's called embedded programming. Uh, sometimes those function names will be smaller uh, because they're dealing with uh, limited amounts of room, limited uh, space in the tiny computer that they're, uh, they're working with that's embedded in, in some appliance or, or a small uh, palm top product, something like that. So there we see that, that uh, we have some limitations by the standard, but in all reality, it doesn't really uh, come through as being much of a limitation for us anymore. All right, let's uh, go on to the next section.